Well, hello and a big welcome to all of our Brain MD Genius guests. My name is Jim Springer, the general manager of Brain MD, and I wanted to express my sincere thanks to all of you for being here today. Is our top tier genius rewards members. I'd also like to thank you for your ongoing commitment to living a brain healthy life by choosing Brain MD as your go-to supplement provider. It's one of your genius guest perks. We've got a very special guest with us here today who's designed a presentation exclusively for you. But before we get going, I wanted to mention that you do have the opportunity to ask questions in real time by clicking the Q&A button below. We'll get to as many of those questions as possible at the end of the presentation. And um, if there's some questions that we can't get to, we will try to answer those and send them out to you in email form. Um, please keep in mind that as much as we would love to answer your medical questions, we can't. Um, we're bound by the FDA and not allowed to do so. So let's get going. Um, our speaker today, um, sitting next to me, um, is one of the most visible and influential experts on brain and mental health. His online videos have been viewed over 300 million times. He's a double board certified psychiatrist, a New York Times bestselling author, and the founder of Amen Clinics and Brain MD. And there's nobody on earth that is more committed to educating and you on how to improve and optimize your brain health and overall well being. It's my pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Daniel Lehman. Thanks, Jim. What a joy for me to be with everyone, you know, especially the people who are closest to us who use. BrainMD products. Um, I made a shake this morning. I do it virtually every morning with the Bright Minds powder, Smart Mushrooms, um, Neurosy, Neurogreens, and uh, I just love it. And the topic today is how to have a healthy brain at any age. So I want my brain and body to stay young as possible, even as I get older. Next week, I turn 69. And I have to tell you, cognitively, I feel sharper today than I did when I was 35. And my brain is better today than it was at 65. And it's not without effort, uh, but you all have habits, right? Good habits take sort of as much effort as bad habits. And it's just the ones you choose to teach your brain to do. So I'm gonna take my wife out to dinner tonight. And when they come to the table and they go, do you want a drink? I'm going to say sparkling water with lemon and as opposed to wine or a cocktail. My brain just does that automatically. And then they're going to go and they're, they're not going to ask. They're just going to put bread on the table. And I'm like, take it away. Because I have obesity in my family. And that doesn't help me. And so it's just a habit that I do. And I choose the habits that are good for my brain rather than the habits that are bad for my brain. And, you know, my guess is you want the same that I do. You want a better brain no matter what your age. So we're going to talk about that. We'll talk about what accelerates brain aging, what slows it down, and what you can do to see immediate results to keep your brain young. So let's dive in. I mean, obviously aging is inevitable, but how we age is not. You have the power to accelerate aging, to make your brain look and feel older, or you can help slow it down, creating a brain that stays younger than your expected chronological age. And I have the blessing 
and the curse of seeing hundreds of thousands of brain spec scans. So at Amen Clinics, um, we do a study called SPEC, brain spec imaging that looks at blood flow and activity. It looks at how your brain works. And it basically tells us three things, areas of the brain that work well, areas of the brain that are low in activity, and areas of the brain that are high in activity. So good activity, too little or too much. And I've seen way too many 69-year-old brains to take my age for granted. Now, I've also seen plenty of 90-year-old brains from people who love their brain, and their brain is stunningly beautiful. So you have a choice. And if you just think with me, I think actually most seven-year-olds would be able to separate this is good for your brain or bad for it. And the more you choose good things, the better you're going to feel. So at Amen Clinics, we developed a mnemonic. This is actually why. Um, Bright Minds Powder is called Bright Minds. If you want to keep your brain healthy or rescue it, you have to prevent or treat the 11 major risk factors that steal your mind. And we know what they are. And let's just keep this really simple. Brain health is three things. One. Brain envy, got to care about. It. Two, avoid things that hurt it and do things that help it. It's that simple. And it's all predicated on this one question that I ask myself day in, day out, whatever I go to do, whatever I go to eat, whatever I go to drink, is this good for my brain? or bad for it? Is it good for my brain or bad for it? And Bright Minds just tells us what's good and what's bad. So let me spend some time and go through it because you'll see Bright Minds a lot on the BrainMD website. And one of our hallmark products, Bright Minds Powder, is based on what I'm going to teach you now. So the B in Bright Minds is for blood flow. Low blood flow is the number one, number one brain imaging predictor of Alzheimer's disease. And if you have erectile dysfunction, which is very common, uh, if you have blood flow problems anywhere, it means they're everywhere. So erectile problems will often go with cognitive problems. And so... You get a scan, that'll tell you if you have low blood flow. If you're sedentary, if you're smoking, nicotine constricts blood flow. If you're um, drinking much caffeine, a little bit's not a problem, a lot's a problem. Um, if you have hypertension, any form of heart disease, it's all associated with low blood flow. So bad for your brain. So how do you reverse that? And in Bright Minds Powder, we have Ginkgo. Why? The prettiest brains I've ever seen take Ginkgo. And um, we also have a brand new product called Advanced Blood Flow. Why? Because SPECT is a blood flow study. And I just know how important blood flow is for your cognitive life and your love life. The R in Bright Minds is retirement and aging. When you stop learning, your brain starts dying. So if you're in a job that does not require lifelong learning, your brain begins to deteriorate. 
And so whether it's learning a musical instrument or a new language or Salem or um, a sport, that's good for your brain. And oh, by the way, exercise is another thing to keep your brain young, especially coordination exercises. Why? Coordination exercises activate the cerebellum at the back bottom part of the brain. And your cerebellum, I often call it the Rodney Dangerfield part of your brain because it gets no respect. It's got more than half of your brain's neurons and it's connected to every other part of your brain. And I want you to think of the cerebellum like the supervisor at the end of an assembly line. So once your brain decides what to do, so let's say it's a car assembly line, the supervisor goes, oh, this is a good car. We're going to sell it. Or this is not quite right. You need to go fix it. Well, that's what the cerebellum does. When it's low in activity, it's like you don't supervise what comes out of your mouth or what you do. And you don't properly inhibit the thoughts and behaviors that you have. And that's why I'm a huge fan. In fact, one of the questions from um, one of our customers is about the interactive metronome, which is a specific cerebellar exercise. The I in bright minds is inflammation. The first eye, there are two eyes. Inflammation is now thought of as a major cause of depression, a major cause of dementia, a major cause of cancer. And our pro-inflammatory diets, so think of sugar and processed foods, sugar and foods that turn to sugar, bread, pasta, potatoes, rice, fruit juice. Uh, they accelerate inflammation. An interesting study from the Mayo Clinic, people who had a fat-based diet, so fish, nuts and seeds, avocados, healthy oils, had a 42% less risk of getting Alzheimer's disease. People had a simple carbohydrate-based diet, this pro-inflammatory diet, bread, pasta, potatoes, rice, fruit, juice, sugar, had a 400% increased risk of getting Alzheimer's disease. Other things that accelerate inflammation, low omega-3 fatty acid levels, and gum disease or not taking good care of your mouth. And for brain MD, we have amazing omega-3 products, uh, omega-3 power, which we've had for many, many years, always one of our best-selling products, omega-3 power squeeze for um, kids or people who don't want um to take more pills. And we have a brand new vegan omega-3, which quite honestly, I think is the best one in the world because most vegan omega-3s only have DHA in them. Ours has a big dose of EPA and you need both to have the right ratio for your brain. Um, also anti-inflammatory is brain curcumins. Curcumin's good for so many things, including situations like mood or pain, which is why also in Happy Saffron, uh, we have uh, brain curcumins as well. Um, you wanna make sure you floss, you see your dentist, you take care of your mouth. Um, the G in Bright Minds is genetics. And we don't think of genetics quite right. Genes are not a death sentence. You know, there are people who go, oh, I got Alzheimer's because it's in my genes. 
um, or I'm overweight <laughs> because it's in my genes. Well, I have fat people in my family, um, but I'm not overweight. In fact, today I, I was at the weight I want to be. I was very happy with myself. And so why does that make me happy? I come from a family of fat people. <laughs> it's hard. Um, my genetics say I have a two thirds risk of being overweight, but I'm not because I know my vulnerability and every day I'm on an obesity prevention program. So that's how I want you to think about genes. I talk about my nieces. I adopted them because both their parents are drug addicts. And no amount of trying to get them help worked. And I tell them, I said, you have addiction in your family. If you use, it might steal your life. But if you know that and you're on an addiction prevention program every day of your life, odds are you're going to have a great life. But you also have to tell your children, we have this vulnerability in our family. Um, the H in Bright Minds is head trauma. Seems obvious, but, you know, people play contact sports who had falls or fights or in accidents. Um, they just have a higher incidence of anxiety, depression, suicide, ADHD, addiction. And <laughs> at Amen Clinics, we did the first, the largest study on active and retired NFL players. We have scanned, sorry, 350 NFL players. I mean, like cool players like Terry Bradshaw, Dick Buckus, Jack Youngblood, Rosie Greer, um, Eric Dickerson, all players of ours, and high levels of damage. I mean, just own it. High levels of damage. 80% of our players get better when we put them on Neurobyte Plus, Brain and Memory Power Boost, and Omega-3 Power. I published that in a study, and then I did a randomized placebo-controlled crossover trial showing that that combination in a reasonably normal clinical group improved mood, memory, even decreased hostility. So I like that a lot. Um, but obviously you want to protect your head. And the older I get, the more I see obstacles that are trying to trip me, whether it's one of the animals leaving their toys out or it's the middle of the night and I'm not smart enough to turn on the light so I see where I'm going. Or... My mother-in-law was walking at LAX and wasn't paying attention. And the sidewalk was just off a bit and it tripped her. So the older I get, the more careful I need to be because it's falls that cause things like dementia to become accelerated. The T in Bright Minds for toxins. Uh, and they're just so many in our society and we've been lied to alcohol is not a health food it is um, cancer promoting and damages the brain um, in fact ireland i celebrated this and you're like doc that's a weird thing to celebrate Ireland is putting cancer warning labels on all alcohol they're selling starting in the year 2026. Um, it's like, tell the truth. Marijuana is not innocuous. It is not good for the brain. Um, vaping is not a healthier form of smoking. Um, but, you know, looking at the brain, I also came to realize oh, a whole bunch of other things that are toxic for brain function, including mold, um, heavy metals, um, general anesthesia. It's very important 
um, to always be on a detoxifying program. Um, and so avoid exposure, support your liver, um, eat brassicas. So brassicas are detoxifying vegetables. Eat fiber because it helps flush things through your gut. Drink water to flush it through your kidneys. And if I turn my camera around, you'd see my infrared sauna, um, which I'm in every other day because you can detoxify through sweat. Um, the M in Bright Minds is for mental health stuff. And we've been doing a lot of research recently on adverse childhood experiences or ACE scores. Um, if you Google adverse childhood experiences, you can take the quiz. Uh, NPR has it on one of its sites. So it's on a scale of zero to 10. How many bad childhood things happen to you? Um, so it's physical, emotional, sexual abuse, it's neglect, abandonment, or being raised with a parent or parental figure with a mental health issue, a substance abuse issue, or incarceration. So there's 10 of these bad things that happen to children. People who score four or more have an increased risk for seven of the top 10 leading causes of death. People who score six or more die 20 years early. My wife, and she writes about this in her book, The Relentless Courage of a Scared Child, um, is an eight. My nieces, so I talked about her, both nines. And so her daughter is a one. And that's sort of the goal, not to transmit your trauma to the next generation. And my wife worked really hard on her. She did a therapy called EMDR, which I talk about a lot. It's my favorite form of psychotherapy. Um, stands for eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. But she also takes nutrients to support her brain, uh, especially happy saffron, which is one of my favorite ones. If she's having any issue with mood and pain, she'll take Sammy and betaine, always takes omega-3 fatty acids, uh, vitamin D, which we'll talk about in a minute, um, and learns how to kill the ants, the automatic negative thoughts that steal your happiness, working to manage your mind. It's a daily practice, right? Just like physical health is a daily practice, just like spiritual health. If you're serious about it, it's a daily practice. The second eye in Bright Minds is immunity and infections. And wow, there's just not a better time to talk about this as we're coming out of the pandemic. Um, that if your immune system is healthy, you did better with COVID than if it wasn't healthy. And, you know, in part, that's how healthy is your gut because about 60% of immunity is in your gut. That's why we make pro-brain biotics and pro-brain biotics max. Um, and your vitamin D level. People who had low levels of vitamin D died early um, than people who had healthy levels. All of you should know your vitamin D level and work to optimize it, either with our new vitamin D K2 supplement or by getting more sun or both. And, you know, we have this epidemic of low vitamin D in this country because the dermatologists won. They made us afraid of the sun. And the problem is parents are lathering children up with sunscreen 
so they don't get burnt. But at the same time, they're putting toxic chemical products on the kids' bodies and the kids aren't getting enough sun. So, you know, I never want you to get burned. That's a bad thing. But 20 minutes a day in the sun, especially early in the morning, is really good for your brain. Um, smart mushrooms boost your immunity from lion's mane, reishi, cordyceps, turkey tail. Um, I put a scoop of that in my shake every day. Um, the second, the N in Bright Mind stands for neurohormone uh, deficiencies or abnormalities. Uh, and every year, I think you should test your testosterone, male or female, your thyroid, your DHEA, cortisol, insulin for females, estrogen and progesterone and work to optimize it. You know, as you age for male or female, testosterone tends to go low, which is why I developed Brain T Max. And on Brain T Max, I just had my level tested. My testosterone was 750, which is just like right in the middle of normal to high normal. I love that. You never want to have a really high testosterone. Like I get guys that are taking shots and their testosterone levels 1500. I'm like, no, you don't want that because your sex drive is going to go up and your empathy is going to go down, which means likely you're going to get divorced. Um, so you want your hormones at a healthy level. Um, the D is diabetes. I could talk about this for two hours. Um, diabetes is increased weights. So you're overweight, obese, or morbidly obese. 72% of the population is overweight. 42% is obese. It's the biggest brain drain in the history of the United States. I published three studies on over 30,000 scans showing that as your weight goes up, the actual physical size and function of your brain goes down, which should scare the fat off anyone. Um, if you're overweight, you now have seven of the 11 bright minds risk factors. So why am I just a bit obsessive? about being at a healthy weight. If you're overweight, it decreases blood flow to the brain. It's one of the factors we saw. We did a big aging study. It prematurely aged your brain. It increases inflammation because fat cells produce something called inflammatory cytokines. That's not a good thing. Fat stores toxins. It puts you at an increased risk of dementia. It decreases your immunity. It takes healthy testosterone and turns it, a word called aromatizes it, into estrone or unhealthy cancer-promoting forms of estrogen. And I'm like, oh, no, this is not, not okay. With this, and we live in a world where if you talk about obesity, all of a sudden you're fat shaming people and now they want to cancel you. And I always rely on this verse in the New Testament I like, John 8 32. Know the truth. The truth will set you free. Obesity is bad for your brain. Um, no matter what people say, bad for your brain. And it's hard. If you are struggling with your weight, I get it. Um, I struggled for many years and tried every diet I could think of. But when I realized the connection is your weight goes up, the size and function of your brain goes down, I got serious. Um, and it's work. But you know, it's more work not being healthy. Um, you know, it's like, oh, getting well is expensive. Like being sick is expensive. You know, it's just where are you going to put your 
resources. Um, the second part of diabetes is you have high blood sugar. And did you know 50, five, zero percent of the population is diabetic or pre-diabetic? So 14% of Americans are diabetic, 36% of Americans are pre-diabetic. And as blood sugar goes up, um, the brain atrophies. In fact, the diabetes has been called Alzheimer's type three. Um, and then there's sleep. The S is for sleep. If you're not sleeping well, if you have sleep apnea, it's just critical to manage that, which is why we make put me to sleep. Oh, back on diabetes, we make craving control. Um, we also have these great uh, protein powders that, I mean, basically start the day with the 200 50 calorie shake, you know, the protein powders, 130 calories. I put half an avocado in it, the vitamin C and tastes great. I feel great. It's when, when, um, and then again, for sleep, put me to sleep. So that's the program that we have. If you want to keep your brain healthy or rescue it you have to prevent or treat these 11 major risk factors so aging is inevitable how you age is not um online we have a brain health assessment most of our brain md uh customers have taken it but if you haven't um, take that. You can learn about your brain type. You'll also get a brain health score and get some very specific suggestions on how to optimize the physical functioning of your brain. All right. We have a lot of questions. Let's just pop open some other questions. Um, so some of these questions are asking very specific medical questions, which I cannot answer because obviously I haven't evaluated you. But let me see if I can give you some general answers and ideas about these questions. So um, how do I create an appropriate supplement routine with so many wonderful supplements and an array of many that apply to my needs? Um, how can I afford it? And what? where should I start? I love that question so much. I think everybody should take a high quality multiple vitamin. Now, some doctors, I was actually just writing this, um, working on a new show for public television. And um, so I'll just write what I, read you what I wrote. I think daily supplementation is also essential. Some of my colleagues disagree, which may be true if we only fed kids fresh, organic, locally grown food that had not been transported across long distances and stored for months. If kids got plenty of sunshine, breathed only fresh, unpolluted air, drank only pristine water, and are free from chronic stress, that is just not happening in our world. So I recommend all of my patients, no matter what their age, take multiple vitamin, omega-3 fatty acid supplement, and then make sure they know and optimize their vitamin D level. So start with that. And then I uh, often will add a probiotic for gut health. And then it depends on the type of brain you have and what you need. So as I'm 69, I take Bright Minds Powder, which is Neurovite Plus Plus, brain and memory 
power boost. And I take that to keep my brain sharp and young. Um, and then it just depends. And that's why the brain health assessment can be in so important. And plus, I have a sweet tooth. Um, and trust me, there's no suffering in getting well if you're smart. Uh, most every day, I have uh, Brain on Joy. It's uh, a, a health bar that is made with dark chocolate and coconut. And there's just nothing bad in it. We also have a plant-based protein bar. We have Brain and Love that is used in many of my wife's recipes. So that's where I start my routine. The other things I take is Happy Saffron. So, and, and I'm not someone who gets depressed, uh, but we released Happy Saffron February of 2020. So the month before the pandemic. And when I read all these studies about saffron, 24, now 25 randomized controlled trials showing it's equally effective as antidepressants to support your mood, way better than placebo to support your mood. It's been shown to help with memory in a couple of Alzheimer's trials. It's been shown to enhance sexual functioning, to decrease hot flashes, not that I have those, but if I'm thinking mood, memory, and sex, all right, I'm in, I'm taking it. So, and I've taken it virtually every day. And the pandemic was hard for a lot of us. Um, I had to close our clinic in New York for a while. Um, I'd lost my dad and, and I just stayed really even. And one of my favorite stories with Saffron is my assistant, Kim, you know, during the beginning of the pandemic, everybody's anxious, everybody's uh, afraid and a bit irritable. And I'm like, you should take this. And the next morning she took it and she comes to work and she's humming. And I'm like, why are you humming? She goes, I don't know. I hum when I'm happy. <laughs> Which I thought was hysterical. So I take that along with brain T max, because I'm going to be 69. I want to keep my testosterone. You know why your testosterone levels, your hormones drop with age. It's the planet's way of getting rid of you. I'm not okay with that. Um, I also take brain curcumins, omega-3 power. Yeah, I think that's what I take. Okay, another question. Um, I struggle with OCD, and it seems that L-theanine is one that is very helpful for my brain anxiety. Okay, so it's very important to understand that the Federal Trade Commission and the FDA don't like it if anybody talks about using supplements to treat medical conditions. And... I understand that. So I'm not going, oh, you have OCD, take serotonin mood support. But if you tend to get stuck on things, to get the same thought in your head over and over, 5-HTP and saffron can be helpful, which is in what is in serotonin mood support. Um, do you think in the future ADHD will be curable? You know, it's sort of like asking, do you think that astigmatism or your eyeballs are shaped funny will be curable? Um, and sometimes with surgery, you can do that. I think with ADD, it's manageable. Um, and clearly there are things you can do in your behavior that makes your ADD worse, like letting your kids have gadgets too early or too often. Um, or feeding them a lot of processed foods and clearly things you can do that will make it better. Um, what would be your top recommendation for brain health for individuals with Lyme disease? Well, I would see a Lyme literate doctor. I think that's really important. 
um, but also make sure your vitamin D level is optimized, smart mushrooms to and pro-brain biotics to get your gut health really good. Um, I wouldn't drink, wouldn't use marijuana or nicotine. And I live with the question. I live with every minute of every day of my life. Whatever I'm doing, is it good for my brain or bad for it? I have a fun story. I worked with a Stanford professor for a year on helping people change. And about a year after we stopped working together, I saw him at a conference and he came up to me and he said, you changed my life. He said, thank you. How did I do that? He said, because of you, I stopped drinking. And now I wake up 100% every day. I mean, isn't that what we all want? And, you know, you wake up 100% every day if you don't poison yourself the night before. Um, another person said, I'm taking GABA for anxiety and a sleep disorder. Are there bad long-term effects? Not that we know of. GABA is a naturally occurring uh, neurotransmitter. Um, and when and how do I phase off? Again, it's hard to know in uh, personal. What I often tell my patients is if it works, take it for about two years and then slowly start to taper it to see if you've taught your brain to be calmer, to be happier, to be in a better place. Um, what can you tell me about migraine headaches? Um, so people who have migraines, sometimes it's from a past head injury and they might have something called the Erlen syndrome, I-R-L-E-N, Erlen syndrome. Um, and colored filtered lenses, so wearing colored glasses, uh, can make a big difference. Now, everybody's lens color is different. So knowing about that is very important. Um, also, vitamin B2, 400 milligrams, has been shown to be helpful. And yes, in the question, um, some food additives like MSG, and red dye number 40 and aspartame can trigger them. Uh, caffeine, because it's a vasoconstrictor, it's constricting blood flow, uh, can actually help with migraines if you're having them. Um, what's your advice for the frequency and duration of hyperbaric oxygen therapy? Uh, completed 120 hours, wow for old TBI, chronic PTSD, and treated bipolar disorder. I like hyperbaric oxygen a lot. Um, so I think you continue to do it as long as you get benefit from it. That would be my advice. Um, Someone had a question about misophonia, which is a disorder where you get really angry and disgusted when other people make certain sounds, such as lip smacking, noisy chewing, and loud breathing. Um, and often what we see is either your frontal lobes are really low in activity and your frontal lobes can't effectively block out those sound or the sensory part of your brain, the top back part of your brain is way too busy. So sometimes GABA can be helpful, like GABA calming, a way to calm down your brain so the noise doesn't agitate you or irritate you. Um, Another person asks about their 89-year-old mother with dementia, and you can accelerate it or you can decelerate it by all of the Bright Minds interventions 
We did. And, you know, it's one of the reasons that we made Bright Minds Powder because, you know, brain and memory power boost, the full dose is three capsules twice a day. And a lot of people thought that was just too many capsules to take, which is why we switched over to the powder. We had a lot of great reviews and comments on how brain and memory power boost has helped people. Um, best supplement for short-term memory, brain and memory power boost. Um, can memory lost dementia be reversed? Yes. I mean, every day you're making your brain better or you're making it worse. And there's this whole field of neuroscience called neuroplasticity. It's so exciting. It is the brain can change every day. You're making it better or you're making it worse. And, you know, if I have somebody with stage four Alzheimer's disease, I'm probably not fixing them. But if I have somebody with Alzheimer's disease at any stage, I want to see their brain to make sure one, it's really Alzheimer's disease. One of the reasons I got hooked on imaging, 1991, when I went to a lecture on brain spec imaging, I ordered scans on the next 10 patients I saw, and it changed all of their lives and subsequently changed my life. But one of my patients, her name was Matilda. She was 69 years old. I was 37, 69 seems so old then sort of funny, I'll be 69 next week. Uh, Matilda was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease and she nearly burned down her house because she forgot something on the stove. And her, she had five daughters and four of them wanted to put her in a care facility. And Matilda didn't wanna go. And one of her daughters had heard me speak and said, we're going to put her in the hospital and Dr. Amon's going to take care of her. And I agreed to take care of her. And when I interviewed her, I thought she had Alzheimer's disease too. She had a slow, progressive loss of memory. She lost her driver's license because um, she got confused on the road. And uh, and I just went to lecture on brain spoke imaging. So I'm like, well, how do I know unless we look? And so the first thing I did was scan her. And in 1991, the pattern for Alzheimer's disease had already been discovered. It's already been published. It's bilateral. So do this with me. Put your hands on your head and your thumbs in your ears. It's bilateral, parietal lobe, top back part of your brain, temporal lobe. Um, so parietal lobe direction sense, temporal lobe memory. And it was bilateral, parietal, temporal, hypoperfusion or low blood flow. Well, she didn't have that. Her brain was busy, especially in the emotional part of her brain. And I'm like, she has pseudo dementia. What is that? It's depression that masquerades as dementia. And so I put her on Wellbutrin, a really good stimulating antidepressant. And she was in the hospital. And that was at a time in psychiatric history where you could keep somebody in the hospital for a month or two. Um, you can't do that these days. But about two weeks on the ward, she begins to brighten. She begins to talk more. She, her memory comes back and she grieved. She started to get depressed when she lost her husband. Some of the therapy sessions with her kids were really intense. And then she becomes her normal, happy, healthy, gregarious self. She starts taking care of all the people on the war. She's cooking and she's helpful in group and it's like 
the movie Awakenings, except she doesn't revert. And when I um, discharged her a month later, she said, Dr. Amen, they took my driver's license from me. She said, I'm so grateful to you. Do you think you could help me get it back? <laughs> and I looked at her and I said, I drive on the same highways you drive on. I said, if you keep taking your medicine and you see me every month and in six months you're better, I'll write you a letter. And six months later, I wrote her a letter. Isn't that a great story? I love that story so much. We are almost out of time. Um, let's see. So many other questions. Let me look at the chat and just see what's going on here. 63 year old husband memory problems. But what I would recommend is everything I talked about tonight. I would take a right minds approach. And you can find this in two of my books, um, Memory Rescue and The End of Mental Illness. So if you have memory problems or someone you love has memory problems, um, Memory Rescue is a great resource for you. If it's more anxiety, depression, mental health stuff, the end of mental illness. Um, Chuck asks, thank you, Dr. Amon, for taking time out in your busy day. I was T-boned at over 60 miles an hour back in 2007. While trauma repaired, fractured scapula, they missed my brain. No kidding. Very common. Reading your books finally helped me realize what was going on and why poor decision-making was happening. The accident was my sixth concussion. Uh, I'm 60, and I've been using supplements for close to six months now. I believe it's helped my brain. Thank you for your insight and your dedicated work. Thank you so much for saying that. Um, and it can be better. That's what I know. That's what I see. That's what I believe. Oh my goodness, Dennis, thank you for saying my 86 year old wife was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease at our clinic in Bellevue four years ago, was put on the daily essentials. She's taken them every day with your great product. She's kept reasonably stable. That's going to make me cry. Um, so, so good. I'm so grateful for all of you. You know, our mission, you know, we often say better brain, better life. We have a foundation, the Change Your Brain Foundation. And my personal mission is to end the concept of mental illness because it shames people. It's stigmatizing and it's wrong. They're brain health issues. So our mission is to end mental illness by creating a revolution in brain health. And that's what I want for all of you. And ultimately, I became a psychiatrist because back in 1979, um, my first wife, we were only married for two months. And she tried to kill herself. And I had no idea what to do. I'm, I'm a second year medical student. I have no idea what to do. And so I bring her to Dr. Stan Wallace, who is the chief of the Department of Psychiatry, uh, where I went to medical school. And I came to realize if he helped her, it wouldn't just help her, that it would help me that it would help our children, it would help our grandchildren as they would be 
shaped by someone who was happier and more stable. And so I just fell in love with psychiatry because I realized it can change generations of people. But you know, if you get your brain healthy, you're modeling the message of brain health and other people will want what you have. And that is just so cool and so beautiful.